fragile planet at the present time. These are the most dangerous decades in all of human history. We have the capability to destroy ourselves, and yet we have not broken free of the limitations of that thin biosphere of the Earth. Now, some serious scientists are talking about whole colonies in space. Not on the moon, Mars, or Jupiter, but on man-made planets, and populated not by scientists and astronauts alone, but by hundreds of thousands of just plain folks looking to get away from an overcrowded Earth, running short of energy, water, and clean air. The human race must leave and occupy other places in space. Do you really believe we can be there soon? With the technology that we have now, we could do it, and maybe by the late 1980s. Talking about outer space and colonizing outer space is always intriguing. And here's a gentleman who knows about it. Would you welcome, please, Gerard K. O'Neill. Dr. O'Neill rolls out this book called The High Frontier that shows how to do it step by step. And it's go time. Anyone can read the book. That will change how you think about space forever. It's possible to make uh, habitats which are relatively big, big enough to be very Earth-like. 90% of the people on Earth in 100 years would move out into space and leave the Earth. We call the Earth the old country. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry O'Neill asked, is a planetary surface the right place for an expanding industrial civilization? The episode of human life being confined to Earth is coming to an end. Space will be the next civilization. Industries and colonies in space may sound incredible, but we who are working toward them know that most of the building blocks are already in place. Jerry O'Neill is a physicist with a brilliant reputation among his colleagues. O'Neill might have stayed in that abstract world, but he has always been intrigued by space. Jerry had a dream of going into space, and he went through the whole program, all the rigorous, grueling uh, physical and psychological tests. I was really worried that O'Neill's influence and his greatness has not been publicly understood. But then if somebody with the wherewithal of Jeff Bezos actually tries to implement it, that's transformational. And it's this generation's job to build that road to space. Professor O'Neill was very formative for me. I read The High Frontier in high school, and as soon as I read it, it made sense to me. Space isn't just something that's just the engineers show up to. You know, this is something for, for artists and, and writers and business people. We were a bunch of young, intuitive punks. We're all furious kids. We're all, in one way or another, caught up in this idea. Three, two, one, zero. Yes, it was crazy. Yes, it was science fiction. Yes, it was way out there. But the steps were there. It just was hard work. And all of us were willing to do the hard work. We, you and I, are the only people who will ever have the privilege of saying, we explored the solar system first. This concept is so enormous in its scale and the change of human events that's going to happen inevitably as a result of this. It's very important that it be about everybody, that we stay true to Jerry's vision. We're all Jerry's kids, and that's something to be excited by and a legacy that we can all live into. Life is extraordinarily rare, extraordinarily precious. Opening the high frontier means making possible and ensuring the survival of the human race.